Hello, grade eight. How are you today? Uh, welcome back to another lesson for social sciences. I hope you are fine. Sorry, I was not with you yesterday. Are you all good, grade eight? Great eight. Okay. Oh, that's good. If you're good, I'm good also. Um, listen, uh, before we proceed, may I please have your name and say name? Just type for me privately. Type privately to me your name and say name. Can I have your name and say name? You type privately to me. It's when I record your assessments. I need a class list. So I need your names. Thank you, Lisetti. Thank you, Natalie. Keep them coming in. Just type in your name and say name, please. Thank you, Henlin. Others, I only have three names. Send them to me. I only have three people who have given me their names, others. Grade eight. I can see Katleko. Katleko. Give me your same name. Others, I do have their names in sin. So I'm only left with Katleko. Okay, as I wait for Katleko to give me the same name, let's proceed. Okay, just um, a reminder, next week we are writing uh, informal set, um, assessments. Uh, so for social sciences, you are going to write on the 23rd next week. 23 July, I'll give you a, a test, informal assessment. So the topics that I'm going to assess you on are the following. For history, I will assess you on the industrial revolution in Britain and Southern Africa from 1860. Remember, you did that topic in term one. And then for geography, I'm going to assess you on maps and globes. You also did that in term one. Are we together, grade eight? So next week on the 23rd, you write my test for social sciences, which is informal. And the two topics that we're going to cover on for history, the Industrial Revolution in Britain and Southern Africa from 1860. And then for geography, maps and globes. You did this, uh, these two in term one. Are we together, grade eight? Are you sorted? Did, did you understand what I said? Okay. 
Natalie Lesedi, that's good. So remember during this week, just prepare for your informal assessments next week. Revise, go through what we did. Okay. Okay, for yesterday, the lesson that you did yesterday for social sciences, uh, we looked at Britain, diamond mining that happened in South Africa. We also looked at the increasing control over black workers, the closed compounds, and migrant labor. That is what we did yesterday. If I may ask, did you learn this yesterday? Did you learn these two topics yesterday? Grade eight, did you do this yesterday? It is Natalie. Natalie. Yes, ma'am, we did. Okay, Natalie. Let's say, what do you mean? No, you were not there in the lesson yesterday. Mm, okay. It's not good to lie, you know. Uh, Haley, I can understand. I see your message. It's fine. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the homework for yesterday that I gave you. Uh, did you do your homework? Do you have your answers with you? So let's revise the work that I gave you yesterday. Okay, question one. Let's go through question one. Explain how mining started in South Africa. Explain how mining started in South Africa. Which answers did you come up with? So make sure you correct your work. It started when a few diamonds were discovered and this led to mineral revolution. It started when a few diamonds were discovered and this led to mineral revolution. So you were supposed to answer like that. Just correct your work. And then we go to question two. Was diamond mining well for South Africa? Explain your answer. Was it good for the South African economy? Yes, because it brought wealth to the South African economy. Yes, because it brought wealth to the South African economy. So that was question two. I hope you are correcting your work. Question three, explain the following terms. 
from Natalie. Yes, I can see your answer. That's good. Question three, explain the following terms. These two terms are very important for you to know in this topic, the closed compound system and migrant labor. You're supposed to know them. Let's start by looking at closed compound system. What was that system all about? This was accommodation that was given to mine workers to live near the mines. Accommodation that was given to mine workers to live near the mines. And what about migrant labor? It simply means to move away from home in search of work. It's called migrant labor. From Natalie, I see your answer. Second answer, people who move away from home to be closer to work. That's very good. So that is question three. Asanda, welcome. Asanda, can I have your name and surname? I think you came in late within a minute or two. So I was asking others for their names and surnames. So that when you write assessments, I have your names. So just type in your name and surname privately, Asanda. And I see your answer for question one. Uh, for closed compound, it was a place where miners and workers were accommodated. Okay, thank you, Asanda. No, they are sending the chats uh, privately. Okay, let's move on to question four. Black mine workers were like slaves or prisoners. Why do you think so? Explain your answer. Black mine workers were like slaves or prisoners. Why do you think so? Explain your answer. Question four. Which uh, answers did you come up with? Why were the mine, uh, mine workers uh, like slaves or prisoners? Why? What do you think? It's because the closed compounds were fenced like a prison to avoid the mine workers from escaping. So in other words, they were like prisoners. So they were fenced inside those compounds. Number two, there was no freedom for the mine workers. Just correct your work, question four. Okay, I see your answer, Asanda. It was because they were different in color and they were not allowed to get out. Oh, okay. Okay, we move on. Question five, give two reasons why closed compound system was used. Why was this closed compound system used for what?
give two reasons why closed compound system was used. Okay, my reasons are the following. Number one, to fully supervise workers. So they wanted to supervise and monitor them when they were working. Number two, to maximize amount of labor. Number three, to minimize diamond theft. So the mine owners, they thought, oh, these, these black workers, they will steal the diamonds. So they wanted to minimize diamond theft. That's why they created those closed compounds for them. So the workers will not run away. Yes, your answer is it, Asanda. That's good. OK, we are done with question five. And then for today's topic, we are going to look at feather land disposition and defeat of African kingdoms. So we're going to look at three African kingdoms that were dispossessed of their land and defeated by the British. The Kosa in 1878, the Pedi and Zulu in 1879. So we're going to look at those three African kingdoms, how they were defeated by the British and their land taken away. So that is what we're going to look at today. Land disposition and defeat of African kingdoms. Okay, let's look at the defeat of African kingdoms. I want you to listen carefully as I go through. Britain continued its land expansion into African kingdoms. So the British, they were greedy. They wanted to expand their land into other African kingdoms. This was a result of the mining industry that was growing within South Africa. So as the mining industry was growing, they wanted more labor from these Africans. Britain wanted to control the African kingdoms by dispossessing their land. So they wanted to gain full control of the African kingdoms. By doing what? By dispossessing their land, taking their land. Africans would then work in the colonial economy. So after dispossessing their land, they'll make those Africans to work in the industries, to work in the mines. So that was their main agenda, the British. Here, there's a map showing uh, the, the colonies during uh, the colonial era. You can see the provinces that we have now, back then it was different. Let's start here, Cape Colony. You can see here the blue color and also this part, Cape Colony. For now, it is Western Cape, Northern Cape and Eastern Cape. But back then, it was called Cape Colony. And this was governed by the British. Britain governed Cape Colony. As we move further, 
On the left there, we have Greeka Land West, where we find Kimberley. This side, we have Greeka Land East. This is also part of Eastern Cape. It was called Greeka Land East, and this one, Greeka Land West. And here, there is Orange Free State, which is now Free State. You can see Bloemfontein there. Basutu land, which is now Lesotho, it was called Basutu land that time. Here we've got Natal, Zulu land. So the Zulu kingdom, they were occupying this place, only this one. The Natal was for the Boers. And we have Swaziland there. And then this big area was called Transvaal. Transvaal, it included Houten, Limpopo, and Mpumalanga. It was called Transvaal. So, Britain wanted to expand its land into Eastern Cape here into the Zulu land and also in the transfer. Okay, let's proceed and see how it goes. We're going to start with the, the defeat of the Kosa, how they were defeated. In the Eastern Cape, there had been wars between the Trek Boers and the Kosas. The wars were caused by cattle raiding. So the Boers and the Crossers, they were fighting because they were stealing uh, cattle from each other. So that led to the wars. Crossers valued their culture and accused the missionaries of destroying their culture. So Crossers were not very happy because the missionaries were coming from overseas, the Europeans, they were coming to their land and destroying their culture. The British was also interested in controlling Eastern Cape. So you can see the Corsairs were already fighting with the Boers. Now the British also were also interested in controlling Eastern Cape. Therefore, they set up a military force in the area, the British. Let's proceed and see what happens. The British also strengthened their authority by building their admin offices in the area of the Tosa Kingdom so that they can fully control them. So they thought, okay, how do we control these uh, uh, Africans. We're going to build our admin offices there so that we can authorize policies to control them. You understand? The British wanted to make Eastern Cape part of Cape Colony. Therefore, they fought six wars against the Corsa. With the help of the Mufengu, the British managed to defeat the Kaleka and finally dispossessing the Corsa of their land. Now, there were people who were known as the Mufengu people. These people were allies with the British. They supported the British to fight against the Corsa. So the British were, were happy about it because they had support from the Mfengu people to fight the Corsas. Okay, and then what happened? You can see this picture showing the Corsas, the war between the Corsa and the British.
Now, we look at the defeat of the Zulu. Land disposition and defeat of the Zulu. King Setuayo was now the new Zulu king after the death of Pande. The British wanted to control him with their colonial power and he refused. So the British wanted to control the Zulus now and the king refused. The British had to look for another alternate way to control the Zulu kingdom and have more supply of cheap labor. So their main agenda for the British, they were looking for workers to work in the mines. So they thought if they could control these Africans, they will gain more cheap labor from them. Now, there was a land dispute between the Tsar and the Zulus. So before the British came to the Zululand, already there was a land dispute between the Tsar and the Zulus. These were the Boers that were living in the area of Natal. So this was an opportunity for the British to control the Zulus. So they were going to use the, the land dispute between these two to attack the Zulus. Its plan for using the land dispute did not work for the British. So it did not work, that plan. And now they had to start a war against the Zulus. So the British, all they wanted was war, nothing else. The British also accused the Zulus of breaking border violations. Shetwayo offered to pay compensation, but the British were eager for war. So he wanted to make peace, King Shetwayo, by offering compensation, but the British said, no, we want war. A number of ultimatums and demands were given to the Zulus by the British. So the British were now demanding from the Zulus. The Zulu army was to be dismantled. British authorities were to be allowed into the Zulu kingdom. Shetwayo tried to settle with the British in a peaceful way by meeting their demands without neglecting the Zulu people. So King Shetwayo was also thinking about his people. He didn't just want to meet uh, the demands for the British. Still, the British were unhappy and just wanted war. Now, what happened? It led to a war in Isandwana, and British army was defeated in January 1879. So in 1879, the British army was defeated. Okay, and then what happened? The British were angry and wanted to, to have a more war to destroy the Zulus. On July 4th, 1879, there was a battle at Ulundi and the Zulu army was defeated now. So in January, British were defeated. And then in July, that same year, the Zulu army was defeated. 
These two pictures show you what happened at Ulundi and Isandwana. You can see in the red uniform, red and black, those are the British Army. And here we've got the Zulus, the British, this side, and then the Zulus. So that was the fight between the British and the Zulus. It was massive. A lot of people died. Okay, we're done with the Kosa, we're done with the Zulu. Now, lastly, the Pedi people. The Pedi people in Limpopo, what happened to their land and how were they defeated? The Pedi lived in the area of Pirin with their chief Sikwati. There were also two poor groups that passed through the a Pedi area. So there were other two groups, uh, the Boer groups that were, that, that were passing through the same area. There was this one, the foot trackers, led by Louis Trichard, and another group led by Hendrik Potik. Oh, sorry, Potik. Sorry. So there were land disputes and conflicts about stock theft between the Boers and the Pedi. So can you see, uh, it's always about land disputes, conflicts, stock theft, stealing cattle. So this was the cause of wars. Oh, it's your language, okay, Katleko, that's good. Now, Chief Sequati felt unsafe and decided to relocate to Taba in 1853 and established a village called Chate. So Chief Sequati uh, cared for his people. So he decided to relocate to another place because the Boers were always um, arguing with them, having conflicts and disputes. There was a peace agreement made by the Pedi and the Boers in 1857, and the Stillport River was made a boundary between them. So they made a peace agreement in 1857. Before Chief Sequati died, he commanded a powerful army. So he left a powerful army before he died. His son, Sikukune, became the new chief now. In 1876, the first war started between the Pedi and the Boers. The Boers tried to burn their hearts. In 1877, the British wanted to expand all over Transvaal and demanded payment of 2,000 cattle from the Pedi. So the British, you remember their main agenda to expand, to have more land. So now they were expanding into the Transvaal. After the demand of cattle by the British, Sikukune denied and this triggered wars against the Pedi in 1878 and 1879. So their demands for the, the cattle, Sikukune said no, and the British were angry. In November 1879, Sikukune was captured and the Pedi were defeated. So we are done. We looked at the land disposition and defeat of three African kingdoms, the Kosa, the Zulu, and the Pedi, how they were defeated by the British. <laughs> Natalie, why did the British not grow their own cows? <laughs> I don't know, they were just greedy. 
you remember it was colonial era. So the colonialists were just greedy. You can see the, the, the war between the, the British and the Paddy, those two pictures. Okay, I want you to research on the following uh, key terms. We are going to cover them in the next lesson. Number one, Native Land Act. Just write them somewhere. Number two, the rent lots. Number three, hard tax. Number four, agrarian society. Number five, unskilled labor. If Africa had better technology, it would be a different story. <laughs> oh, from Elin, okay. Of course, it was going to be a different story. Research on those five key terms, please, grade eight. Katleko, can I have your name and say name? Katleko, did you give me? Where is Katleko? And then let's look at the homework for today. What is your homework? I think it's very short. Okay. Oh, I see your name, Katlego said. Thank you. Okay, so for homework, in a paragraph, explain the relationship between the white settlers and the indigenous Africans. So you're just explaining their relationship between the white settlers or the Europeans or the Boers and, and the indigenous Africans, the Africans that were living already in the land of Africa. So what was their relationship? You explain, you explain that in a paragraph. Just copy the question. Oh, Nsansa also. Hi, Nsansa. Did you come in late or I didn't see you at the beginning? Are you good? Salsa. Is there anyone who didn't give me their names and say names? There's someone who didn't give me their name. I can see someone written, you sir. Can I have your name and say name? Oh, sorry, Nsalsa, low shading, I know. Sorry, eh? Are you done copying your homework, grade eight? Okay, those that came late, uh, let me just go back and remind you about the informal settlement uh, sorry, informal assessment. Let me just go back. If you came late. Okay, so for those ones who came late, I announced that next week you'll be writing an informal assessment for social sciences on the 23rd of July. So the topics that I'm going to assess you on are the following. For history, you did uh, the topic in term one, the Industrial Revolution in Britain in Southern Africa from 1860. 
and then for geography, maps and globes. So make sure you revise this week and to next week Thursday, you have more time. And we also covered these two topics. You remember in week one and uh, last week. Twenty third of July is I think it's a Thursday next week. So that is when you write your social sciences uh, informal assessment. Okay, guys, so make sure you do your homework, please. And research on the key terms. It was nice having you. Great eight. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow again, same time. Bye, take care.